Hi there. As you can see here, we've got two little guitars. The ones in the middle. This is a, an Aria ATU 120 stroke 6 made by Aria, obviously. And this is a pretty well known uh, instrument. It's a guitar lele by, made by Yamaha. And the reason I've decided to do this video is because I was trying to persuade. I was having an argument with a, a pupil of mine and he could not understand why someone like me would have an in, one of these instruments, never mind two. Uh, the reason is quite simple and I'll come on to that but uh, I suppose I better let you hear what it sounds like. The guitar really is, uh, the idea of this is it's a short, short, now it's like playing an ordinary guitar with a capo at the fifth fret. So it's got absolutely enormous range that these these instruments, much l larger than a than a, a violin or uh, indeed a ukulele, but for uh, this has a range from A two, which is uh, two octaves below middle C, to E flat, which is uh, two octaves above middle C. So it's an enormous range, and just to to tell you in comparison with a a normal guitar that you might just have lying around. <clears throat> this is a just this is a guitar I just keep lying about. Whether it's one of my habitual guitars, this is a flamenco guitar, and the the only difference between this guitar in terms of range and the little guitarellis is that you have five notes. Five notes. That's all you lose. So the range is absolutely enormous. An interesting thing is that it compared to an electric guitar, typical electric guitar, uh, you know, we all use in our, our work, and uh, you've got the five notes, the bass notes, but the range of this guitar here, of the Les Paul guitar, oh, excuse me, I'm, you, oh, that's okay, uh, the Les Paul guitar is that this little guitar really has a higher range than a Les Paul guitar. So it's from A2, two octaves below middle C, to the E flat, which is uh, two octaves above the middle C. So you're not losing much in range at all. The guitar really is a very, very resonant uh, uh, instrument. It's got a lot of sustain. That is a fault, in my opinion. When you're practicing guitar, you want a guitar which has got a lot of attack, in my opinion. You don't want a guitar which has a lot of sustain. And that is one of the, the, the faults of the guitarelli. If I hit that, it'll last for a long, long time. And that is bloody annoying for someone who's practicing. That's the kind of music you're playing. Let me just play a few notes. A lot of blues. I think this is out of tune. <laughs> Indeed, it is. Quick retune. Sustain, it's probably a better, a better instrument it's really if you're a singer because you're going to be playing chords and you've got lots of sustain behind it. Lasts for a long time. The classic thing with a flamenco guitar is it doesn't have sustain, it has incredible attack. Now, the aria. The ATU 126 is a different, different beast entirely. This does not have the sustain of the guitar early. And as such, as a practice instrument, it is probably, for me, that is much better. You play 
through the note and you can sustain it if you hold it down and use your fingers but generally it'll, it'll fade away a lot easier I'm not I could use tricks but that's just a general sustain of the instrument why I have a guitar like this is because it's difficult well let me go back to the, the, big, the, the guy who came to me he was looking for some blues guitar lessons and uh, he wasn't getting any better and he'd been playing guitar for a while and he couldn't understand why he wasn't getting any better and the reason why he wasn't getting any better is he was practicing the wrong way there's no one on this earth who is uh, genetically programmed to be a guitarist absolutely no one or a concert pianist, or a violinist, or a singer, or whatever. Then the, the secret of getting better at something is to practice in the right way, and to practice and practice and practice. The trouble is, is if you're only practicing when you can plug in your Les Paul into an amplifier, is you will not have the opportunity to build up the hours of practice that you need to get better. Now, people have solutions to that. I've always, always, always had an acoustic guitar just lying around, and I play the acoustic guitar Every day, just pick it up, you know, and just play. Just play away, and through time, anything I play on the electric guitar, I've already played on an acoustic. Hundreds of times, probably. So the trouble is, is that uh, beginner guitarists, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them, I would say 90% of them, they don't practice enough. And an awful lot of guitarists, who, people who buy a guitar and want to get better at it, they give up. And the reason they give up is they think they're not making progress. And the only way to make progress is to schedule your practice. So you've got to make a commitment that you're going to play every day or every week. or you know, 15 minutes a day is actually much better than two hours on a Sunday. So one of the opportunities you get is that you can maybe just pick up the guitar and just play your scales. But if you can't have an acoustic guitar like that lying around or, and you can't plug in your Les Paul or your Fender Stratocaster or whatever if you have something like this just lying around anywhere it allows you to pick it up and just play your scales when you want to and every key go through the, the go through the, the circle of fifths learn the name of the notes play your favourite riffs, you can even play them, you know, just play them up uh, a fifth, or else you can try and transpose them in your head and just play them normally. If this, uh, for example, that was like rock and roll with Led Zeppelin, you can play very approximate. transposition, practicing your scales, all the different times, major scale, minor scale, flamenco scales, transpose it up and down the neck and it's something you've got there. The range that you're losing of the five notes at the bottom doesn't matter because you can play, you can transpose as well. If you want to learn to play a riff, you know, if you want to play Smoke in the Water, just transpose it up a fifth. If you want to learn to play a certain type of uh, guitar, like country guitar or something, Transpose it how you like. Uh, so the uses are practice, practicing your, your guitar. If you had one of these, if you're still you know playing with your, your electric guitar or your acoustic guitar or your jazz guitar or whatever, if you have something like this, you need something to practice on, and that's why I've got a baby guitar. I take these things all over the place. They go on planes, they go on holiday. People take a ukulele on holiday with them, but I think it's better to take a, if you're a guitarist, I'm not talking about ukulele players, as a guitarist, 
take something like this and it will allow you to do it. It's very good for chords. I'm going to go on to a bit more technical stuff now. I said before that the, the guitar early, this guitar has got a lot more sustain and that might actually appeal to some people. I play the same riff. This has got a lot more sustain. I'm going to come on to a thing called temperament. Everybody uh, who plays a guitar for a long, long time realizes that, that once their ear gets a gets attuned, is that these things, all guitars, if you just tune them to, you know, if it's you know A, uh, E, well this one is, is A, uh, uh, E, C. That's actually middle C, G, B, and A. As you play up and down, if you play it with like that, is it, it will be out of tune over the, over the neck in certain ways. The most famous case, I think, is a uh, classic one, is that if you, you tune a guitar like that, and you play that E, if you play the, the E an octave above it on the B string, and that's in tune, That there, because of what's called equal tempering, is out of tune. And most guitarists, after a while, is that you will just learn to make an adjustment, a micro adjustment, by just if you, you'll just make an adjustment and you'll sharpen that. Just hear that. It's just the way that music works, acoustics works, and uh, the the mean temperament. As you go up the scale on a guitar, that problem actually gets worse. So one of the things I was a little bit worried about was that the guitar early was always going to be out of tune. And indeed tuning can be a little bit of a problem. I'm not talking about getting it in tune here, I'm talking about when you're playing up here. It's not too much of a problem. Now I don't know how they've done it because uh, this guitar early doesn't have as good tuning as this. It's, I think it's exactly the same length of scale and it's usually it's just the way the frets are put is just a, a, a formula translated into distance. Uh, but the, 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 the temperament on this is actually better. It's more in tune. That is if you tune it with open strings. If you tune it in fifths like a, like a violin is tuned. It sounds pretty good. And the big thing that you have is usually is the major third. So it's like do re mi. Do to me can be out of tune as you got the scale. Sounds a little bit sharp to me. that overall that the, the temperament of this is much much better. Now the timbre of the thing is why it sounds like a guitar is because every time you pluck a string like that you're not just hearing the, the first note you're also hearing you're hearing an awful lot it depends how good your hearing is but you're hearing the octave above it you're hearing the fifth above that you're hearing the, the fourth above that, which is the same note again, and then you're hearing the, the major third above that, and then you're hearing the minor third above that. And that's what makes it sound like a guitar. A cello sounds different from a guitar, and a banjo sounds different from a guitar, and a Les Paul sounds different from a Stratocaster, and a, a flamenco guitar sounds different from a classical because of the timbre. Now the timbres of these, to me, I actually prefer the guitar early. I think the sound of that is better, but this is a better instrument to practice on. Okay, but the timbre of it, it sounds 
not like guitar, it sounds like a guitar early. That sounds a bit like a flamenco to me. jazz guitar that. This one the sound of a Les Paul for example over that of a single coil uh, guitar. I prefer the sound of a gut string guitar to uh, a steel strung acoustic uh, just because I can use it more. For the overtones that these instruments pr produce are different from a guitar so they don't sound like guitars. It's very similar, but they're not guitars because the, the length, the, the wood's different, the, everything's different in the length of the scale. It's, it's an individual sound and the aria is different from the guitar alley. There are other ones available. I have played a one, uh, Kua or Kua, some it sounds like Hawaiian name. Uh, I wasn't taken by that at all. It was a much more expensive. I think it was twice the price of, of these particular ones. I wasn't really keen on it either, but uh, I may have to change my mind if I hear it played properly. So again, the use of your uses, practicing scales, uh, chords, uh, transpositions, uh, uh, just songwriting, uh, playing through music if you have to use sheet music or whatever you want, you can do very easy, very easy arrangements on this. If you're just going to simply be using it as a, a you know, as an extension of a ukulele, a ukulele to me is a, a harmonic instrument that is used to support uh, uh, usually vocals and uh, or other another instrument. Uh, this is not a ukulele. This is a guitar. This can be played as a virtuoso instrument. <laughs> play it all over the place. Good for, for things like that. Uh, if someone's actually spent enough long, long enough time, uh, I don't have to think to do it. Uh, you could actually learn to play this really, really well. Uh, but as a practice instrument, I think they're they're fabulous. 
the temperament on it, the tuning is better on the Aria. I don't know how they've done it. I think that the, the frets must be just slightly different from the, the scale on the, the Yamaha. The sustain on the Yamaha is better than on the Aria, but I prefer the uh, 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 a heavier attack. I prefer that sound. But, uh, over uh, the, 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 the heavy sustain of the Yamaha. Essentially this is me more mellow, more sustained, that one's more attacking. Verdicts, very overall. <coughs> These are both pretty cheap instruments uh, for practice. Uh, there's nothing between them because I mean, if you're going to keep it for a couple of years, you know, a difference of twenty pounds is not going to make enough an awful lot of difference, or twenty dollars, or fifty dollars even. It's not going to make an awful lot of difference. This is slightly more expensive than the the guitar early. In fact, I bought this guitar early. Um, uh, I think the difference in price, adjusting for the years that I bought them. Was probably this one is probably about ten percent more expensive. Different instruments entirely, and my own favourite, my own preference for what I want to use it for is for practicing, for you know playing through sheet music or playing th or thing or working things out, and especially for practicing on the hoof. Is that I would have this one every time. This is a great instrument, but more for someone who's maybe just uh, using chords and wants it to, as a harmonic instrument to accompany vocals. And we hope that's helped, and practice more. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.